Are you feeling a little blue? That's totally normal this time of year. It doesn't mean it's any fun though, so stay tuned to learn how I manage the winter blues. Hi, I'm Angela and welcome to my channel, The Friend in Tend. I create videos to help you live a more authentic, intentional, and joy-filled life. I've got 12 tips for you today, so I'm just gonna jump right in. The first tip is do not make your blues worse by judging yourself. January and the winter months are hard for a lot of people. You're not alone. Some of it is the cold weather and the post-seasonal holiday letdown, and also because the days are shorter. Drop the shoulds about how you should feel because you're so blessed. I mean, it's possible to have a lot of good things going on in your life and still feel a little blue. Tip number two, get out of the house. Ideally, you would be spending time in nature and outside, but even a trip to Costco will do you good. The stimulation from a change of scenery can often give you a little boost. Tip number three, find lots of small wins. This is my personal favorite strategy because as a pack rat, I have lots of, um, you know, drawers and closets and things that need to be sorted and organized and files that can be organized and things that can be cleaned. So that is one way to give yourself a really quick win. One of my favorite things I did this month was organize my books by color. I used to have them like one shelf is for cookbooks, one shelf is for gardening books, but having them all by color is, it was just really pleasing and it was a simple, fun way to do something and see results. Other wins might might be cooking a meal for yourself, doing some laundry, making your bed, those all count. Tip number four is to lean into the slower pace of January and February and do something that you loved to do as a child. Whether that was watching your favorite TV shows or drawing and coloring or playing Dungeons and Dragons or my personal favorite, reading. For many years, I used to alternate between reading the complete set of Little House on the Prairie books or the complete set of Anne of Green Gables books. The familiarity and warmth of those stories is very comforting and uplifting. Tip number five is to connect with someone. Even if you don't feel like it, reach out to someone, one of your friends, or maybe someone that you'd like to know better and invite them to lunch. If they live far away, you can pick up the phone. And you can also join online groups and become a little more active and participating. Or you can sign up for some online classes that are taught live so that you can interact with the other students. You could start a book club or a bunko club, or in years past, I used to host an art group at my house where women would get together and we would make something. And in fact, right now, I'm hosting a photography challenge live on Instagram, and it's been really fun to interact with the other students. To Number six is plan something to look forward to. Anticipation is a great way to lift your spirits. I like to plan out my spring garden. I get all the gardening catalogs. I circle all the flowers I like and just sort of getting lost in that vision is very uplifting. And I also like to scout out Airbnb and look at places that I might want to rent for summer vacation. Tip number seven, find the light. Lack of light is one of the main reasons for January blues seasonal affective disorder. So getting exposed to sunlight can improve your mood. And you can do this by opening up all the blinds and curtains in your house and going outside as much as you can, going for walks with your friends or by yourself. You can even purchase a sun lamp to give yourself some additional exposure to sunlight. Tip number eight, start a new hobby. I remember at January a couple of years ago where I was in a Michaels and I had a 40% off coupon and I bought a stamp carving kit. And that was amazing. It was so much fun. I started carving my own stamps. I used them to create gifts and things for my friends. I met a lot of people through the hobby. I got published in a couple of stamping magazines and it was just really a rewarding and relaxing activity. Tip number nine, take care of your body. Go easy on the comfort foods. Believe me, I know how hard this is, but carbs definitely contribute to a sluggish, lethargic feeling. If you can't give up the comfort foods completely, at least make sure that you are adding a lot of healthy, nutritious vegetables and fiber to your diet. And you also want to drink a lot of water because being dehydrated can also make you feel lethargic and blah. Tip number 10, guard your sleep. 
The winter blues can have you staying up later and later as you binge watch some show on Netflix or Amazon that you don't even actually even like that much, but you just can't work up the energy to get up and turn it off and go to bed. Rethink your bedtime routine and make it as pleasant and cozy as possible so that you actually have a little bit of incentive and it's easier to encourage yourself to turn off the TV and get to bed. Tip number 11 is to guard your headspace. Misery loves company and there is a part of you that is going to gravitate towards sad and depressing and anxiety provoking things. So don't let that happen. I find myself deliberately watching more comedy and staying away from the news in the winter. And finally, tip number 12. If you've been having trouble functioning for a couple of weeks, then you should probably talk to your doctor. You could be going through something that is deeper and more profound than a case of the winter blues. And the faster you get professional help, the better, sooner you'll feel better. So those are my tips for managing the winter blues. You may not be them completely, but these tips should help you ride out the wave. Just remember, left foot, right foot, breathe. Baby steps count, and spring is just around the corner. See you next week.